Good evening, everyone. Uh, we're doing our bi-weekly tech Q&A here on Radio Dead Air. Uh, I am Nash. I've been doing tech and stuff for the better part of the past decade plus. And over there, that's Mike and his amazing beard. <laughs> it gets better and better each time. It's Mike, my producer. He also has a long and storied history with tech and repairs and such and uh we'll be answering your questions if you have questions you'd like us to attempt to fix because you don't know how because what is button because i what <laughs> then send them to requests at radio dot com put now that said i do as nash pointed out on his uh music show last week have the occasional blind spot i completely forgot about the green screen so yeah. I sent him a Hulk thing yeah. that is green. How'd that work out, Mike? In, in Skype, it shows up fine. On of course in Skype, it shows up fine. Right now, it shows up red. So it looks like you've got a, a big red head with a you know, black fur on top of it. Yeah. So you could be Red Hulk. That's better than Blue Hulk. Ugh. Ugh. Is it, is, I just, ugh. <laughs> Did you actually say those were, ugh. Ugh. Well, in fairness, they probably won't bring the very, various colors of Hulks into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, so we won't see them there. No, thank God. So what kind of what kind of news do we have this week? Well, we've got a couple of interesting stories. I'm trying to think which one we should start with first. Um, the one at the top of the list. Well, not necessarily. It's not always the one at the top of the list you want to start with. You want to start with 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 the one that's the most interesting. Okay. Um, well, start at the beginning. I think we'll, and when we'll, you get to the end, stop. I think we'll go with this one. Um, so we, we've been having issues, if you've been watching the news, with in, at least in America, and maybe abroad as well, uh, with consumer drones. Ah, yes. Uh, people flying them in places they don't belong, such as neighbor's yards. You know, okay, neighbor's yards, little iffy, not necessarily iffy. You know, you take it up to the neighbor's kid's bedroom window, you're starting to get really skeevy. Or in flight paths of commercial airlines. That's very bad. Very bad. Sucked into a jet engine, you know, seagulls can take down a jet engine. I, a drone, I think, would do worse. Well, it, apparently the American government has gotten sick of this shit. As they should. And, like many of the rest of us. And um, NBC News... It's been reporting that uh, from now on, drones will re be required to register. If you are a, a drone owner, flyer, operator, you're going to have to register your drone with the U.S. government. Interesting. <clears throat> I see a lot of people finding many, many ways to work around this. How so? Well... Um, I can go to Barnes & Noble and buy drones right now. I don't think they're going to make me sign anything when I do so. Well, you, that's what they're going to change. If you sell them, you're going to have to register them. So I think the, the first thing we may see is a lot of places will stop selling drones. Yeah. And I think the build-your-own <laughs> drone uh, community will pick up massively. Yeah, but the problem is... If you get, in order for this to work, in order for any sort of federal registration to work, the, the fines and penalties for defying the law are going to be considerable. Yes. They don't like it when you don't follow the law. They get a little cranky about that. <clears> hmm. <throat> Mainly, th this and... Uh, I can drone manufacturers want to sell their drones because so I I can easily see them doing what they can to comply with this. But immediately there was a uh, th there was outrage 
coming from the the drone Great. community about the fact that they would not be able to that they would have to register their drone devices with the government For, like and i saw argument i swear to god i saw these arguments you don't have to register a bicycle well generally speaking you can't get a bicycle sucked into a jet engine <laughs> You can. I mean, it's possible. You just got to get the jet in the right place and the bike on the on the on, on the runway, and just you know, I'm sure MythBusters has done something similar. I know they've knocked over cars with jet wash. Well, the the the, the other thing about that is, if you happen to pilot a bicycle into something, chances are you're on the bicycle. Also true. Therefore, people will see you do this. You may be called, they will be like some sort of authority figure will come up and say, hey, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Accountability. However, there's enough uh, computing, homebrew computing stuff out there. Uh, the Arduino or whatever the hell he pronounced Arduino. that. Arduino. That's the one. Arduino. Raspberry. Raspberry Pi, things like that, uh, where you'll be able to build your own chipset, you know, and, oh, look, a radio control plug-in, uh, this or that, and you buy all the components. And the only thing I could think that might be difficult is finding the right uh, fan rotors. And even that, I suspect, won't be hard. There'll be someone who goes, hmm, you know, I have this really big computer fan. I bet I can get that sucker spinning fast enough. Are we talking about to build a drone or to build a flying bicycle, Mike? Why not both? I... You've now given me a new project. I'm going to build a flying bicycle. But the the it, it is becoming a serious fucking issue. Oh, great. <clears throat> We've had these things inhibit firefighting efforts in California and elsewhere. Had them showing up in people's backyards. We've had them, what like one of them hit like a toddler, just fell out of the sky and hit somebody, which is yeah. a, another thing bicycles don't do. Generally speaking, there has to be a tornado involved. <clears throat> yeah, if if you're just walking along on the street, it is not a reasonable expectation for a bicycle to come out of the sky. Sorry about that. So, the, probably what's also going to be involved in this, it's not mentioned in the article, but it it's sort of assumed, because this tends to follow registration, there may be some sort of insurance to be flying around a drone, which is a pretty... When they're flying in a straight line, they may not be so fast, but when they come straight down, they pick up some speed. So that's a pretty fast projectile. Yes. <clears throat> I can, it's going to be interesting. I can also, I can also foresee at some point some, and I'm just going to say moron, is going to mount a gun. On Freedom! A and say that under their Second Amendment rights, they don't have to register their drone. Freedom. And I say moron because <sighs> you remember it was it was a Steve Martin movie, uh, Sergeant Bilko, where they had a hover tank. I thought you meant a good Steve Martin movie. I don't remember those. Okay, I want to say it was that one. They had a hover tank, which they're supposed to be using in the, in the movie, and. Uh, uh, their their captain says, "Well, fire it." Well, sir, um, no, fire it. And so they fire the hover tank. Of course, you know mass equations. The tank Whee! round goes one way, the tank goes the other mm. way, and takes out a, a set of stands with observers on it. And this could be the same thing when someone is dumb and mounts a gun on a drone. It's going to go bang, and they're going to lose put control of their drone. Far too much thought into this. Well, they've already made at least one episode of uh, uh, of cop dramas where someone was killed with a, a, a gun on a drone. What is it? The, that's, that's, where, that's either Law and Order or CSI. 
Actually, it might have been elementary. Oh. Yet another show that doesn't get things right. <sighs> Making us dumber every day with our entertainment. Anyway. At least it's not Fox. Speaking of, welcome to the show, everyone. Yeah. Uh, so, another issue that, that we've... Uh, this, this was a big part of the Volkswagen issue. Proprietary source code. Yep. This is covered under trade secrets, under copyright, under trademark. It's... Well, not so much under trademark. It, I've seen them completely misunderstand... Oh, yeah, well... How licensing okay. and shit works. Not so much legitimately under trademark. Okay. okay, yeah, that's fair enough. Um... There's, for example, there's a reason you can't, there's no open source Windows. Microsoft has that closed. It's proprietary. That's why you can't just go into the Windows source code and tinker around and come up with your own version of Windows like you can Linux because it's not open source. This was also how with, with the whole Volkswagen debacle because Volkswagen claimed their source code for their vehicles was proprietary. No one could actually see what it was doing with the car. Yeah. Which resulted in this clusterfuck that's easily destroyed Volkswagen, I, I'd say. For the next at least five to six <clears throat> years, probably. 8.6 million cars in Europe are being... 8.6. But it's also kind of stretched to other areas because of this, this whole thing. Um... In fact, it could actually put you in jail, but not for messing with the source code, for murder. It's, this is interesting. Um, true Allele DNA testing software. It's been used in roughly 200 criminal cases from California to Florida, helping put murderers and rapists in prison. Criminal defense lawyers, however, want to know whether it's junk science. There's a challenge pending in the California Supreme Court right now <clears throat> about some of the company's conclusions. It looks like, potentially, their DNA analysis may be inherently flawed. Oh, goody. But the problem is, because it's proprietary source code, Checking it is something of an issue. Um, handyman and convicted sex offender uh, Martel Chubbs, uh, accused of a 1977 California murder, was accused because they had his DNA in a national database, ran it through this true allele software, and came up and said, this guy did it. Except... Some other people are looking at it and looking at some of the numbers. What the quoted number is 1.62 quintillion, quintillion times more probable that a coincidental match to an unrelated uh, black person was quoted as. So one tested one in 10,000. You know, ma it matches one in 10,000 people, and so one said one in 1.6 quintillion. Yeah. Very different odds there. Uh, I can see why this would be a concern. I mean, this, the same thing happens with the, uh, uh, what you might call it, the breathalyzer people. They want to keep their, their source code secret as well because they're saying, oh, no, it's legit. Trust us. And there's the thing. Normally with evidence, evidence in the American justice system has to be available to be challenged. You have to be yes. able to say, you know, how did you come about your findings? How does your process work? Is and you have to, if it's science-based, <clears throat> it has to be uh, based off of uh, well-understood and generally accepted science. There's a legal term for it. I don't remember what it is. Uh, but you, yeah. know, you can't just go, we got this new science test. It seems like it works. Well, no, it's brand new. You can't use that yet. It's not generally accepted. Five years later, they go, we have this science test. It's been used for five years, and we've never gotten a false positive. Lots science. of scientists agree with it. It's good. Okay, that's fine. Right. If you cannot challenge evidence in court, it needs to be 
it can't be entered into evidence. It's not legitimate. If it can't be, it can't if the evidence cannot undergo scrutiny, it's not evidence. It's your word. You're saying, "Oh yeah, this is a thing that happened." Trust me. Yeah. Yeah, the company told the court it keeps its source code secret because of the, quote, highly competitive commercial environment in which it operates. Well, OK, now, admittedly, I don't what I know about court normally comes from things like law and order. But I would think that the judge could say this court code is to be analyzed, but they don't have to. People can't share what the code does, but they can share their results of the code analysis. They can say good code, bad code, but not how they did the code. I would think that'd be doable. It's 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 just it's this whole mentality we have with rights holders and whatnot, and especially the deference we have to them. We we don't know a lot of what our everyday computer stuff is doing. And that's not like, you know, if if my computer is doing something odd, chances without me knowing it, chances are I'm not going to jail. Right. And, you know, it's it was like Windows 10. I mean, uh, when it rolled out, people started, you know, some people <clears> were <throat> analyzing what it was dialing home with and looking at all the data and such it was sending back to Microsoft, even when you turned off all the options. And so there's various, you know, things people put into place now going, I, I don't care what it's sending back. I'm turning that off. Mm. I'm, I'm routing that to, to, to dev null or to, you know, loop back or whatever. Well, so far on the court issue here, it was thrown out on appeal. Now there's another appeal. The, the, the evidence thrown out on appeal. Now there's another appeal has reversed that appeal. And now it's gone to the state Supreme Court. And the justices have not decided whether it will rule on the issue. Oh, yeah, that's how Supreme Courts work. They have to first they decide whether or not they're going to take the case. Uh, for example, with the U.S. Supreme Court, uh, nine judges. Four of them have to agree. <clears throat> yeah, this is worthwhile to take. And then, of course, the decision might be four, five, five, four, you know, six, three, whatever. Uh, but four of them have to go, this is this is worthwhile. So that's California Supreme Court is probably the same way they have, you know, however many there are, there's a, a certain number of them that have to agree, we should look at this. And as to me, this is one that they should, but, you know, I well, don't make decisions for them. This definitely needs to be watched, especially if it goes past the state Supreme Court and goes to the main Supreme Court. It's it's a question of whether a customer, a, a company saying, trust us could potentially convict someone to life in prison. Yeah. Or worse. Well, <clears throat> let's go into something a little more frivolous. All right. When you're troubleshooting video game problems on a PC. <laughs> okay. What's one of the very first things you ask people if they've done? If they've updated their video drivers? It's it's kind of one of those big deals. When it comes to PC gaming, video drivers have sometimes have to be tweaked and adjusted to work, especially with newer releases. And uh, NVIDIA has been pretty consistent with this. They release something called game-ready drivers. Yep, I have an NVIDIA card, so I get those. 90% of the time, it's like, here, have this game-ready driver for a game you'll never play. But they do support it, which is good. And the, the game-ready driver thing that stays relatively quick, relatively current, relatively up-to-date with adapting things. But that's going to get a little bit of a tweaking very soon. If you want to keep getting those latest drivers in a timely fashion, you will be forced to use the GeForce Experience. I hate GeForce Experience. 
it comes bundled with the whole thing, so. I always uninstall it, option it out, because GeForce Experience takes up system resources, is not very well configured, kind of gets very bossy, and your games are not optimized. Bullshit, they're not. I have the settings the way I want them. I don't need the game settings the way you want them. Fuck off. I feel, I feel much the same way about it. <clears throat> it. says, we want you to change your World of Warcraft settings to this. I go like, no, I like them the way I have it. I can do anything I want. It's, we don't have AC here. I'm not going to crank them all the way up. And in addition to not only using the GeForce experience, you will have to register an account with NVIDIA to, with download the, your... to download your current drivers. Well, to download new drivers. Yeah. Now, they, they will be posting... This will not be the only place you can get drivers, period. NVIDIA will offer quarterly updates on their website. Which means that if you get a new game and for some reason it's not working right, you will have to wait until the next quarter, the next three months, to get a new driver for your game or suffer through the GeForce experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right now they want to give me a, a driver for Star Wars Battlefront open beta. I'm like, it's a beta. In fact, I think the beta is already closed right now. So, fuck off. But if you wanted to play that beta and you were having problems, you would have updated your driver. And sometimes games don't work right without updated drivers. So this is... This is scummy as fuck. I hate this. I fucking... <laughs> the, the, the whole thing, the, the GeForce experience, the GeForce experience is annoyance. That's that's what the GeForce experience is. That's because it's, I don't see why they would do this. I don't see why they would funnel people into software. Ah, because the, because you have to sign up with a mailing address. Now they can email you and try to upsell you on stuff and get you involved in new products and sell their mailing list, which I'm sure is in there somewhere that they're not necessarily going to but, keep exclusive to them. But can't I just give them my fucking email address and shut off the goddamn GeForce experience? I don't like having programs running on my desktop that are taking up resources that are hiding in the background that are doing shit. I don't know what the fuck is going on. I don't like their software. I don't trust their software. It is annoying software. I've been in the middle of games and the fucking notifications for the GeForce experience pop up and I'm like, son of a bitch, I thought I shut you off. There, it's intrusive and annoying and bad. it looks horrible. If you compare it to every other thing in Windows, GeForce Experience is this black and green software that just tries its absolute best to be an annoying little shit. It clashes with everything. It doesn't look like it should even be part of Windows. So for a graphics company to have their graphics so absolutely awful is kind of telling. In general, I don't see where there's an upside to this for for NVIDIA. You know, it, th this is, it's, it's all marketing. I'm sure it was some marketing we who <clears throat> come up came up with this and said, let's do this. So we have a massive email user base, which we can leverage. And that massive email user base is going to get pissed off and, you know, I would I say I suspect a lot of them won't use it. Well, if they want to play some games, they're going to have to. And I would say they would walk, but I was like, well, what are they going to do? Get an AMD card? <laughs> True. Uh, no, I suspect what will happen is someone very quickly will set up a site where you can get 
they'll download the drivers and they'll make them available and NVIDIA will go, well, I sh you can't do that. Like, Stop us. And there'll be there'll you, be sketchy sites where it'll be loaded with viruses and things like that. You'll have to torrent your GeForce drivers. Oh my God. <laughs> Torrenting GeForce drivers, my fuck's sake. <laughs> That's what we'll be reduced to, just not to have to deal with this shit. So, all right, that's that's all the, the news type stuff. Let's actually get to some questions here tonight. Okay, what do we got? I'll check your email. I sent some to you. Okay. I sent you the questions. Do not question the questions. All right, let's see. Uh, let's dig into the meat here. Let's get to an annoying, 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 annoying one. Um, this is from uh, Ann Mall. I have a tech issue with my Dell XPS 12 Ultrabook laptop for about two years after receiving it from my school as per our technology package after for taking exams. My computer, like many of my fellow students, also at the same laptop, has a few issues to say the least. The one that's persistent with my computer is, I'm not even sure if the right this is the right word for it, glitch, where it keeps asking me to run the Windows to run Windows update because so, for some reason my computer has not done any consistent update since the day I received it. However, every time I try to activate Windows Update, my computer gives me error message code 8007042. All right, I looked this one up. Okay. This, there is a fix for this, and it's it's a glitch with Windows Update that it needs to be reset and refreshed. Oh, this is where you, you, you wipe out the uh, entire list of updates it thinks it's done, so it starts over, right? Yes. Done this one. There are two ways to do this. The first way, and I'll show it here on the screen so everybody can see. The first way is you type in all the shit. Then stop it, and then blah, 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 blah. It is an involved fucking process. Or, thankfully, Microsoft has these wonderful little Automatic diagnose and fix it, which if you hit it, will run a script that will fix all this shit. In theory. In theory. Sometimes it works. Most of the time, I would say it works. If you're logged in as administrator, as it says to do. Mm -hmm. uh, this is on Microsoft's website, supportmicrosoft.com. It's a knowledge base KB article. 971058, that's KB971058. If you go to their site and type in KB971058, hit search, it will come up to this, click the little run now, it'll run a script on your computer and it will refresh your Windows update and hopefully that will fix it for you. Hopefully that now, will be... One thing to note, you're running Windows 8, I see here. Uh, if you were running Windows 10, it is a completely different process that does not have an automated tool at this point no. in time. Not yet. Isn't stopping Microsoft from trying to push everyone toward Windows 10, but there's no automated process yet. Yeah. So. For Windows 10, it is a 16-step process. Yay! But it's, not, it's, it's honestly not that difficult. It's just pretty... tedious. Yes. It's like m many things I've come to find in technology are like that. Not difficult, just tedious. All right, next one comes from uh, Russell Lear. Uh, I have a two-year-old Dell Inspiron 3520 laptop with a Core i3 processor. It has recently died from burnout motherboard in about two months after the warranty expired. I've asked around about this particular model and people People have told me that apparently it's not a very good model, despite the price. It's about $500 new. Ooh, for $500, an i3? Uh, two years ago. Even two years ago. I got mine two years ago for $500. It's an i5. Mm. Okay. 
Ooh. Um, is it worth getting it fixed or should I just cut my losses and get a new laptop? Cut your losses. Cut your losses, yeah. The reason for this is getting a motherboard fixed, uh, especially a laptop motherboard. Well, one, okay, you could probably find that motherboard, a replacement motherboard for that on eBay mm -hmm. for maybe around $20. Mm -hmm. uh, and Well, not 20, I'd say closer to 100 is what I've, I've typically found. Okay. Well, so the i3 motherboard, so. A hundred, uh, seriously. Okay. Uh, for not much more, you can get a new laptop with a lot more disk, a lot more RAM, faster processor, the whole nine yards. Well. Uh, well, not much more than the hundred plus the aggravation of taking out the old motherboard and placing it and doing all that stuff. If you were, if you were uh, technically adept enough to replace a motherboard and a laptop, uh, which is non-trivial, you're basically taking apart the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, and you've got to remember where everything went, put it back together. Laptops are very for unforgiving about, oh, I have these extra parts left over. I used to do this. This was part of my job for a living was I would go to people's uh, workplaces or their, or their homes or whatever, and I would take apart laptops. It is not simple. It takes every day. Taking it apart in the first place can take up to an hour just to disassemble the laptop. Well, that's uh, depending on what you need to do. Some of the newer laptops, if it is a well-known replaceable part, there might be a panel on the lower part where you right. take off panel, remove component, put in a new component, done. But motherboard, like you said. The, yeah, take you, apart the whole thing. When you take out a motherboard in a, in a, in a laptop, which for a lot of problems like if there's one of the USB ports isn't working, if sound ports not working, sound port, no video output, if the, it just won't turn on, you're replacing the motherboard. And that is essentially taking the entire thing to pieces. Do you know the fucking little screws? <laughs> I hate the little screws in laptops. I have. Dell was annoying as shit about this. There are about, expect to see, upwards of 50 tiny little screws. And not all of them are the same size. And not all of them are the same fucking size. You have to remember which size screw went in which size hole, because if you don't, and God forbid if you lose one of the little screws, because when I, you put it all back together and you're like, fuck, where'd it go? I used to have like this egg crate carton that would come in shipping containers that I would use to put the screws. I would have to sort the fucking screws to put the fucking laptop. Back. It was the most frustrating fucking thing. Fuck, 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 fuck. So now that said, this is another not difficult just tedious. If you have a good three hours to kill, if you don't mind taking apart your entire computer, and most of the time you can find instructions for exactly how to take it apart online, you either search for a service manual or a teardown with your system model number. In this case, it would be the Inspiron 3520. You search for those, and you potentially you can find exactly step by step with photographs how to take it apart. You can do it, but how sane will you be afterward? That's the question. Look at me. <laughs> now, for the cost of a new motherboard plus your time and aggravation, mm -hmm. you can get a new laptop for not much more yeah uh, and uh and go now if you were to go the new new laptop route i don't recommend lenovo but you know and nash maybe has a brand that he would recommend or doesn't recommend uh, dell but, isn't bad i've been using my i don't use my dell as, as, as a secondary system dell isn't bad that's what i use mine for for primary system i would think acer's been making some pretty good stuff msi's making some pretty good stuff yeah. Thing to watch with MSI is uh, some of their laptops 
The way they're put together is not necessarily with screws, it's with the plastic clips snapping parts together. I hate that's, that too. That's, that, that's okay until you drop it from more than about that far. <laughs> and then the plastic cl clip snaps. This is another little annoying, nasty thing inside these computers. Instead of just simply unscrewing the whole thing, you have to get these little snappy, clippy parts to put it back together. And sometimes while you're fixing it, they break off. So it doesn't go back together the right way, even though you've screwed all the fucking screws back in. Fucking clippy, nasty plastic. Ah! But yes, I think our overall recommendation is you, you should probably replace the laptop. For, for an i3... It's not yeah. worth it. It really is. And, and, and you will, and you, especially, you know, you go to i5 or whatever, you will notice a, a significant difference in how fast things are running. Yeah, if you're getting a new laptop, don't don't go any lower than uh, an Intel i5. Uh, and, and since you, it sounds like you're primarily using this for school, I mean, yeah, uh, it's... Actually, no, this is uh, a, this a previous person, yeah. person who had school. So this, yeah, you will notice a significant difference in what you're doing, uh, especially since the new laptop is going to have a much better built-in video card as well. Yeah, uh, right. People on the channel saying, I, I don't know if I said Acer or Asus. Asus. Asus is, is the type. Don't get Acer. Don't get Acer. Asus. Not Acer. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> yeah, if, if, if an i3... Uh, an i3 is a Facebook machine. That's it. That's what you're getting an i3 for. An i5 is a little bit more robust and can handle some more shit. Don't don't get an i3. Don't get a fucking i3. Ugh. All right, let's see what's next. Oh, this is a nasty one. Oh, I hate this shit. Um, from Metal Mario, got a question. I have about a I have 450 gigabytes of disk space on my C drive. As of now, I have 10 gigabytes of free space. Do a lot of internet surfing, save a picture slot. Plus, I do video editing, so I've got scratch disks, as well as a folder for music and sound effects. Plus, there's an assortment of crap on my downloads and documents folder. I even deleted my browser history from Google Chrome and only knocked off two gigabytes. The point is, I don't think I knocked down even 100 gigabytes if I d deleted all the stuff I commonly save to. Where the hell are these gigs of data filling up at? That is a very good question. I've had to deal with this, too. It's annoying. Okay. Uh the, the places I've seen fill up quite a bit, uh, you're going to have Windows temporary files where mm -hmm. it's downloaded patches and because it's made a rollback point, mm -hmm. um, you've got rollback data there. Microsoft is not always the best about going, I've got 19 rollback points already. Is that enough? I'll make a 20th. And so you've got all of those. So it can, that can build up very, very quickly. I just... For example, I just ran disk cleanup on mine just to see what I had. Uh, system, for example, system error memory dump files. I have 1.5 gig of system dump files. Do I use these? No. They're just errors for when your computer crashes. I have 7.5 gig in my recycle bin. I should empty that shit out. You should probably empty that shit out. But... It, sometimes it can be a little hard because one of the biggest problems with Windows is it throws shit every which way. It's, and disk cleanup won't necessarily tell you where, you know, regular disk cleanup won't say, oh yeah, I'll clean this up too. But there's a wonderful program for free that can help you sort this mess out. It looks through all the directories on the drive. It tells you what type of files are where and gives you an idea of what all is in all those drives. It's called Windir Stat. And I'll put that up on, on the screen so everyone's Windir or Windi Windows Directory Statistics is what it's is is what it stands for. That is what uh, great program, horrible name. Winderstat. That sounds like some sort of some horrible German thing. Tonight. We shall winter start. Winter we start. To, we have to get the information out of them. Get the winter start. Get the winter start. Yes. Um. 
You can find it at Winderstat.info. I keep saying, I'm saying it like the, no matter, from now on, all you're going to think is Winderstat. Winderstat. You can find that at Winderstat.info, just like it's spelled here on, on the screen right there. And like I said, it's free. It doesn't, it, and it's very robust. It will help you go through each individual directory, find out what you have where, and help you figure out what the shit needs to go. Simple, easy, wonderful. Vinderstadt! I'm gonna be doing, what am I doing? Ah, uh, all right. More questions, more questions, more questions. Let's see. Um, This is another good one. This one comes from E.T. I don't the phone home. No, no, it's not that ET. Um, I was recently looking for ways to manage my passwords. Came across some older ours articles about a service called LastPass. I use LastPass. I'm a fan of being able to have a number of different legitimately secure passwords, but there's no chance of me remembering my own. And the fact they were hacked earlier this year kind of killed the idea. My question is, do you know of any similar LastPass service except without the cloud? Now, I, I will point out, LastPass was hacked, but they didn't lose their passwords. That being said, having a fear of putting shit, important shit on the cloud is legitimate. I don't fault you for that one bit. And when my shit eventually gets hacked and all my passwords get leaked, you can laugh, laugh at me. You're, you're perfectly welcome to. But there is an alternative for people who want to keep their shit local. They don't want to store their passwords in the cloud. And again, another uh, open source piece of software is KeePass. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, don't, by the way, don't pull a Sony and put all your passwords in an Excel file on your desktop in a file labeled passwords. Don't do that. That's bad. What are you even doing? Never do that. You should never have Okay, we're joking, but also, seriously. That's what people at Sony did. You should never have a little notepad file or a Word file or an Excel file on your computer with all your passwords. You should never, ever, ever do that. That, that is like having the sticky notes all over your screen that have this week's password on it. You know that person at work who does this shit puts a sticky note up, except instead of it just being on your monitor, when you put it on your computer, potentially you've put it on the entire internet. Never fucking do that. But KeePass is, um, which again, another unfortunately named open source, because it says KeePass, but I, I keep hearing KeePass <laughs> in my head. I can't stop now. We have Vinder Stott and KeePass. He is trying to keep his ass. Get the vendor start. Get the vendor start. Um, <laughs> summon the vendor start. All right. This is it's summon the vendor start works too. <laughs> this is is a uh, free open source. Doesn't cost you anything. Very robust. Works great. Can be transferred between systems on a USB flash and it, it's exactly what you're looking for now keep in mind and it does do its own encryption and everything so you don't have to worry about that but keep in mind if it's if it's on your system someone sits down at your computer and you're not there they could still theoretically get in there yeah that is one of those those loose points on this on the security but for the kind of solution you're looking for, this should do it. Now, it does lack, of course, some things like uh, two-pass verifi uh, two verification. Two-factor. Two-factor, yeah. It, it lacks two-factor verification, which can be a problem. But for those of you who don't like the whole idea of the cloud, who want to keep your stuff a little more central. I can I can appreciate it. I can understand. There have been a lot of cloud hacks that have been a bit of an of an issue. Yeah. So this there were a couple this week, weren't there? Cloud hacks? I think so. Either this week or last week. Where? 
Um, I'm trying to remember who got hacked recently. It was, uh, it wasn't anyone big. That's why I'm not remembering it, but it was just like, oh, okay, well. Another day, another hack. We're falling the fuck apart. Yay, internet. So yeah, hopefully that will take care of it for you. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's useful, a little bit of software. So, um, oh, okay. Last one tonight it's from George, George. Hi, George. Uh, dear Nash and Mike at seemingly random times. Now, now Mike, I I'm going to ahead while we're reading this question, see if you can just from we're going to get to a certain uh, word in here, and it will def tell you exactly what the problem is. I think I see the word already. At seemingly random times, both myself and my roommate will lose connection with the internet. We just have to disconnect and reconnect and go back online, but she does progression rating and wow, so this could be problematic. Wonder if this is a problem with our router. A Netgear wireless Netgear. N1 fan! <laughs> there you go! Well, not necessarily Netgear, but in this case, the wireless N150. Oh, George. Uh, it's it's kind of it's kind of junk. George, 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 George. I think I, I'm trying to remember my first my first wired router was a Netgear. And it was awful. It would drop connection. This is wired. We're running Ethernet cables through the apartment I lived in in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Um it would drop connection every five minutes on the dot for five seconds, which was just long enough not to be disconnected from EverQuest, but it was just long enough to go, oh, fuck, I'm going to die. Yep. Which now, now I'm going to show people on this is from Belkin's own website, Belkin, who has and they've, they've this is the current version of it. But this has been the same price for this product model for as long as I can remember. $29.99 for this router. That's the Belkin. He's got the Netgear though, doesn't he? Yeah, but that Belkin uh, got purchased Netgear. Okay. Or I think they did. But even the 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 Netgear M150, the older Netgear, is twenty five dollars on Amazon. Yeah, twenty nine on Staples. Twenty nine ninety nine. This is not a good router. That I'm almost absolutely one hundred percent certain this is your problem. It is an unmitigated piece of shit. And yet still has a four star uh, average review on Amazon. But that's because most people who are using it are probably going, I'm surfing the web. Yeah, 4.5 stars on Staples, by the way. <laughs> and I also like, would you like a two year protection plan on this piece on your $30 piece of shit? How much is the two year protection plan? $5 on your $30 piece of shit. Okay, so Amazon will do you one better. The the Netgear, twenty five dollars with Amazon Prime. Include installation service for fifty dollars. Oh, so not only do you get free two day shipping on your piece of shit, you can have someone come to your home and, and for plug it in. for more than the cost of the piece of shit itself, plug it in. We will plug in your piece of shit. Okay, so where Nash and I are going to likely go is we're <clears> going to say something like the uh, Asus RT66U yeah. or in that neighborhood of things. You're going to pay 100 to $150 yes. or, or maybe a little more depending on which Asus model you get. Uh, there is a $275 version. Um, the Asus RT-AC3200, it has five antennas on it. It you looks like a. Sp what's what's the model number? I want to show people a picture of this. The RT, Asus RT, AC thirty two hundred. It's excuse me six antennas because I can't count. Six antennas. It's amazing. It's a lot of antennas. You don't need six antennas. 
What the fuck is it? Look at this fucking nonsense. Look at that fucking nonsense. Who are you trying? Where are you trying to get wireless from? The moon? However, that, that is, that's a $275 one. You're almost certainly going to have no issues with it. Tra. You, you might have your neighbor go and say, my cat has started to glow. <laughs> Aliens will show up, be like, bitch, you was, you was messing up my, fi my flight plan. Or I'm, they'll go, I'm, dude, hey, I'm trying to get home. Can I, can I leech off your Wi-Fi? <laughs> Seriously, yeah. Now, for 100 you can get the RT-N66U dual band. Uh, for 150 uh, the, man, that's the same one. No, N66U, AC66U, et cetera, various. Um, Nash and I both have had good re uh, results with the, uh, the, with the Asus brand. Uh, when I was looking for a replacement for my piece of shit. Uh, oh, router, this is the AC, I just want to show people the AC5300. Holy crap, that looks like something a Dalek would use. That's a fucking torture device of some sort. That that is that is what the Vinderstadt looks like. That's the the Vinderstadt. Um, <clears throat> but uh, when I was looking for a replacement for my piece of crap router, uh, Nash recommended the Asus to me, and mm. I've had no problems with yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. The only time I've had problems with it is when I have misconfigured the thing through my own ignorance of. I wonder what this setting does. Oh, that causes me to lose my internet. Don't let do me, that. Let, let me undo that. Honestly, and I go on Google and look, oh, that's I don't have that. So that's why that setting didn't work. Honestly, I'm a big fan of Asus, but I don't spend less than $100 on a router. Don't. Yeah. Because uh, you really are getting what you pay for. And with a $30, I know sometimes you're like, I can't really afford the nice router. I'll just get something that works, except it doesn't. They re you, you are, are buying trouble with these devices it's it's yeah now the way it, we, we talked about this before the way it works basically all these all these routers use the same chip or the same chipset family and the difference is memory in the uh, uh computer the the more expensive ones have passed better tests yeah uh, and and things of that nature so they go oh these passed all the tests with flying colors we'll sell these to asus these passed all the tests barely. We'll sell these to Netgear. Because Netgear's not willing to pay for their low-end stuff. Uh, that kind of money. Netgear does have some expensive routers. I probably mm. still wouldn't get them over Asus just because I've been burned on Netgear yeah. so many times. Netgear, Belkin, D-Link, T-Link. The any any the, the the never they sell these products they ostensibly work but they are not very reliable they have no longevity they're the they are throwaway products my mouse cost as much my bluetooth mouse that i use with my laptop when i'm traveling cost as much as that router yeah that's not i don't want to rely on my home network on something that costs actually no this was thirty dollars so you can get it cheaper i wouldn't want us to, to to depend on my network connection for something that costs less than my mouse yeah that's that where, whereas whereas i go for like 60 and 80 dollar mice yeah but that's because i game I, you know it has hang on just hung up on something it has lots of buttons i don't know if you can see well that's that. just my laptop mouse my 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 actual real mouse is one of those nasty again i've noticed with gaming gear this is my my current mouse it's a geforce what is it g502 they tend to look a bit like torture devices and it hurts your hand the first day or so you use it and then your hand gets used to it, and it's actually better conformed for your hand not to get cramps. And I will notice most of them have these ominous glowing things on them. Well, the ominous glowing things in mine are 12 little buttons. What is it with the gaming aesthetic? We have to make everything look so painful and sharp and angular and mean. Uh, but I have to set mine up so that after my computer has been uh, idle for 10 minutes, all the lights turn off because... Uh, this is also in my bedroom, so if all the lights didn't turn off, I'd be 
It's bright in here. I can't sleep yet. I would rather my 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 you know hardware be all comfy and shit. Comfy is met better than. Well, like I say, I got used to it after a couple days, and my hand hasn't cramped gaming since. <sighs> of course, I have. I am the kind of person who has broken a mouse by squeezing it too hard. So. Okay. So, well, that that is all our questions for tonight. Hopefully, we helped you with some things. If you have yeah. some for next uh, time. And one thing to note, uh, as much as Nash and I uh, recommend Asus Gear, I don't own stock in the company. I don't think Nash owns stock in the no. company. No. We, we recommend it because it's good. Yeah, it's... Uh, of the, if someone else was making shit like Asus, I'd be recommending that, too. Yeah. That said, if any Asus executives see this and want to give us free stuff to test out, we'll take it. Oh, yeah. But could you, like, make it not look like it was something that was designed to torture someone with? Please stop that. What are you doing? It looks like... That thing looks like a nightmare. I'm going to put that on the screen one more time. Because that... What is that thing? So... If you flip it upside down, it looks like a spider. It looks like it's going to crawl in your... It's like a mecha thing. It's going to crawl in your house. And, it looks like something a dollar could make to go... To go Scuttle in there and, and investigate that. You ever seen that Tom Selleck movie, Runaway? Yeah, yeah. Okay, fucking... so my family had it on, on video disc. Fucking... G yeah. yeah. For those of you who haven't seen Runaway, it, it was a very great, very good, for the time, early movie about uh, now-ish uh, computer technology. Well, more advanced. There's lots of robots killing people. Uh, all the robots killing people were being run by Gene Simmons. I'm not joking. From Gene Kiss! Simmons was, Gene Simmons of Kiss was the villain. Gene Simmons of Kiss. And he looked way different. It was weird. Yeah. He had a fro. Yep. He was rocking. Gene Simmons rocking a fro. The things you learn on this show. If you want to see Gene Simmons rocking a fro, check out Runaway. It's as bad uh, as it Tom sounds. Tom Selleck, Gene Simmons, yeah. Um, I forget, Nash, do we name these episodes? This one's obviously going to be the Vinderstadt. Yes. This is the Vinderstadt. That's to say, release the Vinderstadt. Um, folks, we'll be back uh, in two weeks. If you have questions, send them to request at radiodeadair.com. Put tech Q&A in the subject line. Uh, for Mike and myself, goodbye. <laughs>